Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and uh, let's see, what do we got here? We are looking at this lovely camp scene. You see some light kind of moving through the trees. Got some rocks, you know, your typical campsite. Got some animated trees here. Okay, ready? You guys ready? Let's drop layer in. Well, she seems like she might be that tall. And... Watch this. So as we take her to the background, she shrinks. It's taller and taller. Bring her to the foreground. She gets in front of the tent there. So you guys remember uh, when I did my session with Atropos um, last way, a couple of weeks ago, looking at Ember, how excited I was about Vistas, which is a feature of Ember, the new game system from Foundry. It's not out yet. Uh, the Kickstarter just ended. But I thought, this is so cool that how cool would it be if it was something that was system agnostic? So I was talking to Adif, and we said, hey, I bet Mass Edit could actually accomplish this. And so that's what we built. And it's, uh, yeah, you can now have your own vistas. We call them scenescapes. And you can put players... Uh, in your scenes, and maybe this guy's particularly tall, so we'll kind of put him like that. And then you can move him around, and you can move him, you know, behind trees and in front of things, and uh, in front of other players. Move him all the way to the background, have him hanging out back there. And you can dress your scenes with stuff like the things that you see here. And uh, I've actually made some a bunch of free stuff for you guys to use. There's some premium stuff. There's some free stuff. So I'm going to show you. And, of course, if you make your own stuff, then you can make uh, as many scenes as you want using this kind of technique. And I'll, over the, as the months go by, weeks go by, I'll show you how to produce your own assets as well if, that, if you think that's helpful. But where you really need it also is in the, the players themselves. So check this out. So let's say that you, your players have, like, just a favorite character and they want to create them and, and put them in these scenes because of AI. And I really don't know another way to do this. I don't think it's realistic for players to go and build a bunch of versions of their characters without using AI. There's some really cool things that you can do with AI these days that do let you do this. So, you know, you can have these kind of different characters uh, with, you know, different motifs and poses and things inside of scenes. I mean, you can even have them like, sitting down in a scene. I mean, how cool is that to set a scene with all of your players, right? And to be able to give them different looks and have them merge into the scene in really cool ways. I think it's really awesome. And it was really the inspiration from Ember. Love what the Foundry guys are doing. We're not doing some of the stuff that Ember's doing where they're like getting into the, you know, the sprite level stuff. Uh, we're just using normal foundry right so i'm just dropping things in as tiles and tokens and you're seeing them all populate in here and you can have animation and other stuff now there's some things it doesn't do today that maybe you saw ember doing and because it's still a work in progress but i thought maybe you guys would have fun with this so what today's tutorial is going to be about is how to create a scenescape uh some of the tools that we've given you guys to actually play with and yeah that's that's kind of the objective so just to show you some other possibilities so there are some uh, building and you know town assets so if we come in here and we grab our character we can drag her around and notice she's the right size you can you put them behind the building somebody's sneaking around so yeah you can you can do like these city kind of things and you can generate or download from the internet uh, lots of different kinds of backgrounds that you can use it's really pretty agnostic show you one more more one more sorry this is a premium scene this goes with the magic tower release from this month and you can see here we've got like candles magically floating this is a mage's tower and this happens to be the the dining scene which there's a battle map to and so yeah you can do fun stuff like this put things in the foreground and the background your players can be around a table this table is just a prop that you can move in front of background. You can see this chandelier is a prop as well. You can have little dust motes flying around, whatever kind of story that you're trying to tell. 
And at the end of the day, you can really kind of put your players around and have a lot of fun with it. You can even see this player. She's sitting on this little bench over here. So I absolutely love it. I think it's really fun and opens up a whole new vector for storytelling. So with that, let's jump in and I'll show you how to make a scene and some of the functions under the hood. So before I continue, uh, if you haven't been to the BaileyWiki channel before, um, I'm BaileyWiki and I'm a DM and I've got a team of DMs and we are a bunch of nerds that love art and technology. And we teach you how to do stuff. Uh, we teach you how to do things, be a better GM, create better experiences for your players is really our main motto. And, uh, and you know, whether we create or somebody else does, uh, we hope that you can learn something here. Of course, if you do like the assets that you see, you can subscribe to BaileyWiki and you can pick these up. We have a ton of 2D stuff. And we have like, this is like just one of the levels of the Mage Tower from this month. But this is an example of what we do every day is like 2D maps and artwork with interactive elements and fun experiences where <laughs> your players will be shocked at this machine coming on and just having fun in maps and creating experiences and not only keep them engaged but make them make them walk away and say that was a really really fun time uh, subscribing is really easy you with one month you can literally pick up everything we've ever made and you can stick around or you can leave and you still keep everything that we've ever made you can come back later and when you do you just pick up everything that you missed from the first time so it really we give you the power to just be a member and a supporter as much as you want as much as your budget allows um, but without having to miss out on all the stuff that we do so with that let's jump into the tutorial so first off, uh, what you'll need to do this and to play with it or to make your own is you'll need BaileyWiki Mass Edit. Mass Edit does a ton of stuff. Now it does scenescapes as well. Um, but you can use Mass Edit as the main um, engine for building these. And I'll show you what's involved here in a second. If you want to try some free stuff and you want to try, um, like, make the camp scene that you saw earlier or the town scene, you can do that right now. Just download BaileyWiki Nuts and Bolts. It's also free. I'll show you where the assets are here in a second. If you want the premium stuff, which I'll walk you through what some of the premium stuff is later. Um, and by the way, there'll be timestamps, so feel free to jump around. Uh, you just need to be on our basic tier for this with our foundry basic tier, and that'll get you all of the, uh, all the other props and other assets that we, that we made for this release. And this is on top of our normal release. So you get all the other 2d stuff and everything else we've ever built, uh, for the same price. Um, if you subscribe for just one month. So hopefully that helps you guys out. All right, so once you have those installed and active, let me show you, uh, let's kind of start making a scene together. So we're just gonna create a, um, we'll just call it Scenescape Demo. It's just a normal scene. Now we're gonna pick a background image for it. And in the free nuts and bolts, stuff we have all these background images so why don't we why don't we just do a town let's do a town okay so i've got that uh, as my background image i'm going to do a couple other things while i'm here i'm going to make the background black i'm also going to turn the grid off or go to gridless and then on the lighting i'm going to turn off token vision turn off fog exploration and i'm going to turn on global illumination and turn off this wall height in case you have wall height installed uh, don't worry i'll show you a way to remember all this stuff later that's mostly what i'm going to do here i'll save the changes let's jump over to our scene okay so here's our scene nice black on the edges uh, there's a couple more things that we're going to do here though if you didn't notice when we went to our scene configuration there's this new button down here for, for scenescapes if you press that, you get this cool little menu here. So let me explain what's going on. What these are, are um, because we wanted this to be system agnostic and frankly, asset agnostic, we wanted you to be able to drop in things and get measurements. Because what Mass Edit's going to do is it's going to use these to figure out waypoints so it knows how to resize your players as they move around. So let's grab, let's just click this. This is our normal six foot person. And let's go up to a door. Here's a door here. And six feet, I know this is uh, the olden days, so I bet six feet's pretty tall for that door. So we'll put that person there. We'll click him again, and we'll go way back here to the back and say, yes, yeah, somebody might be standing here. 
and uh, here, let's say up by this door, they might be more like that. And let's zoom way back here and say, I don't know, up here, our, our people might be this big. In fact, let's go all the way back and say that's how big they're going to get when they're standing right up to the front of the screen. Okay, so we've got them laid out. And there's going to be some defaults here. So let's go to the movement tab and we're going to select our limits. Like how far can players go back in the scene? If you use this, it'll auto select kind of where the last one is. And, uh, but if you don't want to auto select, you can come back here and say, okay, I don't want players to be able to go past like that point there. All right. And step size, you can play around with this. Defaults are probably fine. If you click it and then use your arrow keys, you can shrink it down. I'm just going to make it. I think two and a half. And then under miscellaneous, you can add black bars again. This adds black bars in the foreground so that your props and things stay within the frame. So you may want to click that on. Maybe it's something we'll turn on by default. Notice when I turn it off that it seems like everything goes away. Well, it doesn't. If I go back to configure, go back to scenescapes, I can see all of my, uh, my data is in there still. So it just sticks around and you can make changes later. Okay, so now we've essentially established the depth of our scene. So now we can start adding things to it. So if you open up Mass Edit and you go to, uh, let's start like putting some pieces in here. So the free stuff is in, if you have Nuts and Bolts installed, you'll get this little BaileyWiki Nuts and Bolts compendium here. It's underneath the BaileyWiki um, folder. If you open that up, you'll see Scenescapes props free. And let's just take a look at what we've got in here. If we drag this out, we can look at these in a little bit more detail. First, we've got a couple of buildings, right? So if I just double click this, I have this building. Now what I'm gonna do is hold down Alt and mouse wheel, and that's gonna change the size of my building, right? And I wanna put it uh, about the place and the size. I'm kind of holding down Alt and just holding, you know, moving my mouse wheel to change its size. I can also do things like pressing H for horizontal, and that'll flip it horizontally, right? So you can put these things on the side. So notice you can tuck it in here underneath those black bars, right? Kind of like the look of that. And you've got other things you can play with too. Uh, you can put these way back in the distance. Uh, let's put a, see, we don't want camping decor. We'll stick with settlement decor. Let's put a bridge in here. And I'm gonna hold down Alt again. I'm gonna find a spot here towards the back where I can put the bridge. I just kind of like the idea of, putting a bridge there and then we've got a lamppost so let's put a lamppost in I'm going to hit H to flip it horizontally I'm going to move this right up to the front because I really like the idea of maybe this um, you know kind of being in the foreground and in fact there's some really cool stuff here so if you have tile sort from Ripper or excuse me um, uh, tile scroll and you go to the animation tab, you can do a parallax strength. And I prefer rippers uh, for this. It just performs better. Um, doesn't, it's not as jittery as uh, other ones. Notice if I move this around, it uh, the lamppost moves as well. So I kind of like that effect. Okay, so let's see what else we can put in here. Um, let me walk you through some of the other assets that you might avail yourself of. I'll get into characters in a second. You've got some natural decor, rock stones. These all size pretty well. They're also animated, so check this out. Hold down Alt and kind of resize this. Maybe I want my tree kind of tucked back here. You notice how it's swaying? That's just a token magic effects filter. So if I select it and I hit token magic effects, I can see the filters that are involved with making this animated. Now, while I'm building, I'm going to point something else out. What Mass Edit introduces also in the tile tools is this pixel perfect hover. Whenever you start putting a bunch of um, tiles on top of each other, it can be difficult to find your way to them and just pick them out. Uh, so you notice that I'm not selecting that tile yet because I'm hovering over empty pixels. I don't, it, when pixel perfect's turned on, I can hover over just the pixels and grab it. It works with everything else in the same way. It was so nice to have this as I was testing with Adif that he actually, upon my request, deployed it for everything else. Because when you're making maps with tiles in general, even 2D maps, it's really nice to have this pixel perfect thing. It means you don't have to open up tile sort as often and try to get to things. So it's it's really cool. So anyway, you just toggle it on and off here. And uh, you may find reasons to to toggle it off. I've been finding myself leaving it on for most of the time. 
All right, so continuing down, uh, then we've got our settlement decor, you know, a cart, a uh, merchant. Uh, we've got these flags, right? So let's put some flags in here. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Now, my flags I want to put up in the air. So how do you do that? Well, I'm in preview mode right now. Uh, you get there also by pressing Shift-D. If I hit Shift-D, and then I hit Shift-Z, Ah, there we go. Now I can move it up and down on the Z axis, right? So I might want these uh, up here. Maybe I want them, I don't know. I'm going to put them in the foreground. Notice if I'm holding down Z, I can move them up. You see how it's like moving them up in verticality? And it's really what's happening. We're just using foundries elevation to move these in front of and behind each other right and you can see these are slightly animated as well so they're kind of blowing in the breeze all right so this is feeling pretty good uh so now um you know what let's just let's look at some of the premium stuff just to let you know what's available go to our tile tab and we've got a lot more buildings of different varieties and you can just you know pop these in and just show like an edge of them. You can throw them way back in the background. Maybe there's something about that building. It's part of the, the plot you're telling. Uh, different kinds of towers. Just stuff that you can throw into wilderness scenes or cities. We've got all this camping stuff, things to sit on, different kinds of um, tents. Uh, you've got interior decor, um, these tables, you know, relatively light right now, but we'll be adding more of this stuff. And then you've got a bunch more natural decor, a lot more rocks, bushes, these kind of um, rocky, bushy things. You've got some dead trees or some dying trees. You've got a stump. And then for the town, uh, lots of stuff that you would decorate a town with, crates and whatnot, different different kinds of lampposts, more merchant stalls. So let's just throw uh, let's just throw another merchant stall in here. Maybe there's a story that we tell around some of these merchants or this area that uh, that we might find interesting. Or maybe we can tuck this back here. In fact, yeah, like it. And I think we're pretty good. So now let's drop in our players. So what MassEdit will do, here's some of our players, like Fael is this elf rogue. It's going to look for her portraits first, and that's what it's going to drop in. So as long as you have a portrait, you can drop it in. You notice I've got her from head to toe, so I've got the entire portrait. It's kind of like a paper doll. And if I just drag her into the scene it will establish her in the scene it knows that she's however six feet tall i think is the default but you can change her configuration like her height yeah her height is five seven so it's going to calculate that compared to those other like um measurement dolls that we set and it's going to kind of guess at where she should be of course you can change that i hit shift d it goes into preview mode and I can move her around and it will resize her as I go. And maybe I, maybe I want to tick her up a little bit, a little bit taller, right? Maybe uh, here, you know, towards the, the front of the screen, maybe I, I really want to have her be close. And of course, if I double right click her, go to appearance, if I've created other poses for her, I'll find them all in here. So uh, what do I like? Kind of like this one, she's kind of looking devilish over her shoulder. Right. And and then I can drop my other ones in the same way. Uh, you can also make brushes out of them. So you can like if I have her selected and I have mass edit open, I can just say create preset from selected and it'll create a preset from her. Once you have a preset, of course, and you can do cool things like adding it to a brush. And once it's in a brush, you can press this little button to create a macro out of this. So you use the name, for example, for the macro, and you can come up with these cool little tools down here below where I can just click on Urkek, my, uh, my barbarian, and I can drop him into the scene, make him the size I want, and then move him around, right? I'll put him right in front of our bridge, and then I'll do the same thing with Erstwin, our, our mage. So I want him to be a little bit taller than her. Can I maybe move him back here? I don't know. Like that. And and that's it. It's it's as simple as that. Um, so some things that it doesn't do. Turning the lights off is you can do it, 
but there's some things that you'll have to fudge. We haven't yet got to like lighting, right? So if I turn the lights off, you'll see it'll just get dark. And of course you can put lights in here. And I can start lighting things up, but you can see how the light interplays with everything, right? It's kind of shines on the background and, but yet you can, you can pull it up here to the foreground and it'll start to shine on things. So there's different ways that you can handle lighting. I've been playing around with it and we'll add some more stuff. Uh, and another thing, by the way, too, is you can just tint things. You can tint things darker. Um, you can make the whole background a tile and tint that darker. So you can definitely fudge some nice dark scenes, but um, we haven't got to lighting yet. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I should also mention this is an alpha release. Be prepared for things to change. Uh, assets may change. Folders may change where they're located. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that we we may change. And functionality might change. But just keep that in mind that uh, we're looking for feedback. If you like the system, you'd like to see um, uh, more stuff added to it, just come to my Discord and pop into the Mass Edit channel and talk about it. If you do want to um, generate your own stuff, you can do that. You can use AI. You might be able to find uh, assets online. I wasn't really be able, uh, able myself to find a lot. Um, so we generated most of the stuff with AI. And that's really kind of the only way I think I can do it, um, especially when you get to characters. There's, just, there's not an artist that your players are going to go to, and I mean, maybe they will, and try to get them to create, you know, 15 different poses of the same character but this is i think a really good use case of ai it's kind of like hey if you if you want to create a character and really want to invest in them and you want to story tell them in this kind of way uh, it's kind of the only way to do it so i will also give you guys a tutorial on how you do do that if you want to use mid journey for example which is what i use to generate these i can show you how to do it and how to do it and have the same continuity of character so that you can really create those those different expressions and be able to you know tell your story in you know i think a, a really dynamic way you can even make like top down tokens with them so uh, i'll help you out with that as the weeks go on of course if you make your own stuff you can always use mass edit to uh to store it all this is a free program you can create as many uh, assets and prefabs that you like and you can store them all in your mass edit presets main a directory and and have a whole bunch of scenescape stuff that you that you have for yourself uh, because we're using mass edit you can have multiple things connected you can have you know like a light like a lamp with a light attached to it if you decided you want to do that you can have anything that you would apply to a tile like token magic effects already apply that's where you get the animations from uh, so really the sky's the limit as far as like what you want to create as an asset and then reuse later uh, it might be interesting to know that you can actually move these around. So I'm using my arrow keys to move her around and I can even move her into the background. This is where that step distance may come into play. You might want her to move faster, but like funny enough, you can like even do combat in a scene like this. Like, you know, if I target him and I attack him with her, it'll, it'll actually work. Right. So they are tokens at the end of the day and they're on a scene um as well so you could even imagine maybe some sort of boxing match right i might make a boxing ring or a, a fight ring a fighting ring for you guys to play in where you'd have the scene set up you just drop your players in and they just duke it out like like real gladiators uh, i also mentioned that the parallax stuff uh, is certainly interesting we may build it into this just to have one fewer dependency and we also want it to like perform like it should uh you know i'd like to move it left and right but maybe not up and down so um you may see us uh, incorporate parallax we may not in the meantime uh rippers tile scroll has a has a great default parallax effect in it so that's it i hope you guys are excited to play with this uh what's next well there's gonna be a lot of development in this um it depends we're kind of doing this on top of our normal content so we'll try to uh, include some scenescape stuff in the monthly releases so check those out uh, if you haven't uh supported ember yet i think it might be too late but get it keep an eye out for that they're going to have some built-in scenescape stuff that is going to be great i'm sure because uh, foundry's doing it so keep an eye out for that it'll be with their actual vistas um, which will be a little bit different system, but hopefully this helps bridge the two and give you the ability to do vistas, you know, no matter what you're playing. Uh, sure, continue to follow my uh, YouTube channel if you want to see how to create these, um, how to do the AI work. If you want to start generating stuff that way, maybe you want a different art style. 
I'll show you some tips on how to do that, especially around characters. And uh, yeah, otherwise, if you want to get the premium stuff and you want to subscribe uh, and support our channel, we'd love Love our subscribers. It's the reason we get to do crazy stuff like this. All the stuff costs money and resources. So the fact that we've got a, just a really great, uh, you know, global group of, of supporters is really kind of what enables all this fun stuff for us. So thank you in advance for everybody who subscribed. And and if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. That's why we give you all these free tools, is so you can create things and let your imagination run wild. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us and have fun making your maps.